So hello, I see we have some new faces here. Uh, Zainab, hello to you. Hello to everybody here today. Catherine, thank you for sharing the link to the docs. Uh, you can see in the chat, you wanna go ahead and open that and follow along. Including the interpreters, feel free to go ahead and read that document. And then today we have a few things to discuss. First thing is to uh, discuss the code of conduct. We are here to respect each other, respect our thought process, respect our uh, thoughts as we share them, things of that nature. So I uh, just want to make sure we continue to do that. Uh, I'll have some new faces. So I am Rob Koch. I am the co-chair for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing Work Group in CNCF. Destiny, uh, there has the baby in the picture. We are both the co-chairs for this Hi. group. <laughs> uh, again, we have some new faces. Zainab, could you go ahead and introduce yourself? Hey, everyone. My name is Zainab. Um, I am one of, I came to KubeCon uh, at Salt Lake City, and I came to the Deaf and Hard of Hearing session. So um, that was really cool. I am one of the maintainers for Knative, um, and I'm also one of the UX working group leads. So I'm just here today to kind of like listen and hear what's going on here. I know you guys are trying to develop some accessibility recommendations. That's something I want to be involved in because uh, it's, it's part of like UX as well. Um, and I've worked in accessibility design for the government of Canada before. So yeah, just here to see what's going on. Wonderful. Thank you for joining us today. I saw somebody else here, Matt. Uh, yeah. So I went out to dinner at some point uh, in the past, so I just wanted to say hello again, Matt. Hello, everyone. My name is Matt Denny. Um, yeah, I met Rob originally in Chicago last year, and then some other folks in Paris, and then met up with a lot of this community um, in Salt Lake two weeks ago. Um, I kind of grew up with um uh some some deaf and hard of hearing people in my family and adjacent to it so i have a, a connection to that world this world um i actually have a new goal that jay jackson and andrew davis have been helping me on to buy london i'm gonna be able to speak to all of you without an interpreter i'm about 18 hours in since salt lake into my courses so i'm super excited um, and i recently just submitted a talk with uh jay jackson for london um and so, and and I'm all, I'm a marketing director for a cybersecurity company called Testify Sec, and I just want to help this group grow and bring awareness and kind of like she said a minute ago, um, bring more accessibility to CNCF in general. Excellent. Thank you so much, Matt and Zeneb, for joining here today. Really appreciate you being here. Uh, it's great to see new faces and new allies to help us grow and to showcase the work that we do. So thank you. All right, now, uh, <clears throat> we've done the introductions. Nobody, let me make sure there's nobody hiding that I haven't seen. Uh, everybody's got the video on, nobody new. Nobody's hiding there. All right. Sandeep, I, Sandeep's hiding, right? And there's one other person hiding there too. I see the chat there. Ah, Sandeep, okay. Very good. Hello. All righty, uh, moving on with the agenda. It's Sandeep's name sign. Oh, uh, Sandeep, thank you. Uh, so Sandeep, do you want to lead this discussion of the uh, retrospectives about what we have done thus far, uh, what we did in Salt Lake City? Take it away, Sandeep. Uh, I mean, 
it was more like an open question in that if, I mean, if the members wanted to share anything, like what worked well, what did not work well, and what can we do better next time. I have one thing. So yes. um, when we had the kiosk, um, we need to be sure we are the people who are responsible who are at the kiosk are actually at the kiosk and not sitting at the couch. <laughs> and interpreters have to be there too. So it's like, because it's like people come and if there's no one there, it's not like you wait for, someone is not going to come to the kiosk and wait for you to come. They're only coming if you're at the kiosk. So it's only two hours, people. <laughs> I was sitting at the kiosk all day long, so you can do two hours. So it's like, just like, yeah, it's like you have to be welcome. Like if you're sitting there being well, like, you know, like you're welcoming people to come and chat with you. If you're just sitting at the couch, people just don't know that you were there. It just looks like it's a kiosk that's empty. And also making sure that the interpreters are there with you so you don't have to look for them. So that's something that I just saw. Uh, that we definitely need to improve for next time. Travis, yeah. I'd like to add, yeah. Um, the kiosk duty, it was pretty challenging for me nice. because I was involved with other discussion groups, the BIPOC group, et cetera. So uh, I felt like a lot of things were happening at the same time I was assigned to that duty and I felt pretty overwhelmed, honestly. So like the week before, it would have been nice if I knew and I could prepare for that schedule. Um, and it, it was important for me to be a part of the other things in the community. Um, so that that was one thing. And um, also that second thing, gosh, I'm not remembering what I was gonna say, but I, for the kiosk, oh, for the keynote, I was hoping that we could all sit together next time. Um, on the left side of the stage or the right side of the stage, whatever, but that we could all just be together because it seemed like we were kind of spread out. And so um, I wanted to tell um, whoever organized that maybe, I don't know, um, I know it's a challenge, but it'd be nice if we could all be together. Yeah, this is Rob. The kiosk, if you want to, you know, if it's your duty to be there, but you want to leave, it's fine. But you need to find a replacement. If you're supposed to be there, slotted for that time, just find somebody else if you need to leave. That's totally fine. Uh, so that would be one thing I wanted to point out about the kiosk. Uh, from what I have seen with the kiosk, it seems it was uh, well attended. Uh, I would have some meetings and I was checking out things at the kiosk there. But you're right. The interpreter should be there standing at the ready uh, if somebody comes up. I, I know that was an issue of running to find an interpreter and say, hey, can you come over to where our booth is? So that was the one of the downsides. But now we know for next time that the interpreter needs to stay there uh, along with the people who are manning the booth. All right, uh, any other comments? Who else? Um... No, I don't have anything Alfonso says. Nothing for me. Yeah, I wanted to add something. Yeah, it was your first uh your, your first time there correct yeah right. yeah it was my time. first time yeah and I liked it mm -hmm. yeah and I liked it and it was a good experience um meeting all those people it was really great so I was really thankful for that um so you know I feel like I've always been just kind of lurking here on the zoom but it was really great to see everyone in person so that was really terrific so yeah that's great awesome uh Uh, Travis, Travis, uh, this was your first conference as well, right? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have your hand up, Catherine? Yeah, just to go back to the kiosk. Oops. Oh, uh, Travis. People are talking. <laughs> All right, anything that you wanted to mention about any, anything that was uh, good or bad about the conference? I was sitting in the front. You, you said you would all prefer to have us all together, correct, Travis? Yeah. Uh, how was the keynote? Do you know why we were all separated when we were sitting there for the keynote? Or is it just, it just happened to shake out that way? Uh, Andre, do you want to add something? Yeah, I wasn't there, but I did see a lot of the lives on YouTube. 
and I saw that it looked like it wasn't it wasn't accessible on YouTube because the interpreter wasn't always shown. So that was one thing that was really bad. And I was kind of trying to watch the captions, but it wasn't the same. Um, I, it'd be nice if they had the interpreter on the YouTube. Point taken. I'll actually make a note of that. Can I go, Alfonso says? Okay, yeah, the YouTube. Okay, um, one problem with the YouTube, they didn't have the picture in picture there where you could see the interpreter. It would be better if you could blow the interpreter up and see the YouTube, I mean, the keynote speaker in the smaller picture rather than having the tiny little interpreter when they did show it, but that's just my opinion. Destiny is saying yes. Um, I wanted to talk about too um, if there was a better way to communicate with the interpreters. I, I know Slack is not ideal with the interpreters joining because there's you know various interpreters, but I felt like there had to have been a better way to um, get some of our requests. So the interpreters, you know, they were kind of at the hub and we would have to run to get them. So um, it would be a nice idea if we could um, better set up a communication channel for the interpreters and then we could join it as well. So, um, and then we could inform them um, where we were gonna be and what we needed in terms of accessibility for workshops or talks or whatever we wanted to do. Um, and, and, you know, we had, I know it was a lot on the interpreters to figure out who was going where, um, but it, it would be a nice to have an open channel for that. We could say, hey, I, I, is anybody available for this particular room at this time? So that's just a bit of feedback. And Alfonso says, I have a question. Um, the group of interpreters, for example, you know, I mean, I would go over and um, let them know, but it'd be nice to have some kind of group communication with them. I could go grab one, but it would be nice to have group communication. Like an app or something where we could um, text them or message them and everyone's agreeing. Yeah. You can simply your WhatsApp, no? You can very easily create a group in WhatsApp. Yes, WhatsApp. Yeah, I mean, it was just hard to find. It was hard to find where everybody was going to be. Yeah, it, it, we could definitely do that and then have everybody in one group and that would be better. Yeah. <clears throat> Yeah, we could definitely use WhatsApp. Um, we we did do that, it, we, but that was like the second or third day of the conference. So um, we'll have to talk with the interpreter. I mean, I had to say, how are you guys contacting each other? And they said, oh, it's we've got a WhatsApp group. So we were able to do that, but it wasn't till already in the, in the conference, I was already going. So we'll set it up next time to where we have a group ahead of time and WhatsApp or uh, Slack or whatever communication method we all choose and um, we'll be able to contact one another that way. So one small thing is that, right, we came from India. So all of the folks who came from India, we had created a WhatsApp group before itself. So like if we wanted to take a photo together or something, you just quickly text and meet. So it's the most easiest way to communicate. My suggestion is that if someone is at the conference, um, Celia or whoever, um, if we can maybe, whoever's gonna coordinate that we have one central place that we can have a person who coordinates that information. So the conference is, you know, it's not our working group necessarily, but I mean, we met four new deaf people there at the conference who just came and showed up and are not members of our working group. So I'd like to give them access to that too um, via the events. But I mean, a lot of people didn't even know how to get accessibility. And um, so I would throw that out so that, you know, we say this is where the interpreters are for accessibility purposes and so anyone is there can go get an interpreter by doing this or put it on our working group you know it's just for us yeah that's all really great feedback this is rob all wonderful feedback thank you for that uh 
How about the hearing folks getting access to us? Was that okay? Any commentary on that? We have some new person who's got to Saber or Saber, please. Do you want to introduce yourself? And Jenna as well. Hi, Jenna. Hi, you want to say something? Uh, Saber or Saber, did you want to say something? Okay. Uh, Matt, did you on want the to chat. say something? They're in the chat. She cannot talk right now, I think. Oh, uh, oh they just Matt? told me that to me directly. Yeah, yes, I I was able to. So I found this community. I, I knew some of the folks, but I found this community just by walking the hallway. Um, I didn't know about the ASL, ASL event that you guys held. Um, I would love to help get that out to the masses in a more generic way so that every attendee of KubeCon, because everyone I talked to after I knew y'all were there, they all wanted to go to that class. They all wanted to meet up. Even I think a lot of you saw the message I put in, in chat with the people I brought to dinner with us. Um, they loved getting exposed to this this working group. And so I'd love is is kind of what I, my roles and support I do with the, the CNCF marketing committee. I've already talked to them on ways we can help put this out so that everybody sees it um, more than just, like you said, this working group um, and give access more. And, and I mean, I'd love to see even more um, if there's like many, I, you did the big ASL session, but if there's like mini sessions or mini meetups or, Hey, um, every day at 9 a.m., come meet us in this corner um, for 10 minutes and you get to learn five signs or something. Different creative ways to just pull people, because it's also really hard for people to commit to missing a different talk um, if there's only one slot that they could come to your thing. Um, having those mini sessions, that's what we do a lot with our, our partners and clients is have a lot of mini meetups. Um, and it seems to be easier to get people involved. It's a little bit more work, um, cause you have to do more of them, but it's a broader reach than just one time, one in uh, one shot, one kill type of thing. Great point. Thank you for sharing that, Matt. I appreciate that feedback. Uh, Catherine, you had your hand up. Uh, yeah. So, uh, just going back to the kiosk and the, um, uh, schedule. So I think like some people were of course new. Uh, so we do have a schedule right uh, before the event. So I think that's things that we should kind of look at. It's like, what are the things that I want to attend? Because instead of just trying to find a replacement right, right away, because like, uh, you know, like just like planning a little bit ahead, looking at the schedule, what are the things that you want to attend and then make sure that your uh, shift does not uh, uh, collide with whatever uh, you're doing so i think like it's better yeah like planning ahead is something that we should learn um and um yeah so for the events i think the great thing was that we did bundle it in the dei hub which is new uh sponsored by google and initiated by google and they want to continue to do that which is what kind of led to the success for the asl crash course because we had a home for it so I don't know. I, I like your idea, Matt, about doing little things. It probably would have to be in the DI hub because we did try to do like little things before. And it was like I was dragging people from the show floor into the because it, it was painful. <laughs> it's like no one knew. But I think like um, if we have that DI hub, which the thing, of course, there are a lot more things going on there. Uh, maybe uh, see like mini session because because it wasn't fully booked the whole time and it's like it would be great if it would basically become like almost like a different track right like you have like that's where all the things are and I was also suggesting like, like having diversity panels because we only only have like one slot like whenever we submit more than one diversity talk only one gets accepted because it's like the, there is no more availability so maybe that would be a great way of, of talking more about these things. Oh, so Catherine. So Catherine, a oh, very good point. So I'm just wondering why can't we have a diversity panel also as a part of the I hub? That was what I suggested. So we're talking about that. Okay. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah. yeah and I think, uh, uh, continuing to the idea that Matt suggested, we could actually have a sort of a, uh, maybe like a sign language lightning crash course, like a five to 10 minutes crash course, uh, multiple times we run it. Okay, 
So in the day, community have every day, every day we run multiple sessions, but a short session so that people can actually commit and come to it. If you have a one hour, then people may not be able to commit. But if you have a five to ten minutes, then people are more likely to turn up. Yeah, we have to try the problem with KubeCon. It's so big and a lot of people like arrive late because it's they have to find it. So that's a problem with the short sessions is like if people still need to find the room, they may come and it's already too late. But I think we can experiment with it, right? We can experiment. Uh, I but think, yeah. yeah, I know a lot of people had <clears throat> finding the DI hub, like the guy from Google was saying that a lot of people were late because <laughs> It took them some time to, but like, I, I mean, we should experiment. We have to collaborate with them, of course, because it's not only deaf and hard of hearing uh, events, right? Like there's so many other things, but we can, now we know the contact and we can kind of collaborate uh, on the program a little more than before. Awesome. Very, very good. Uh, so Sandeep? Are you good? All right, I think I'm taking notes for all the people that are making comments. Are we good so far, Sandy? Excellent. Okay. Great. Uh, Catherine, talking about the KubeCon on the agenda, the next KubeCon in Salt Lake City, uh, that talk, right? We need to promote them. Uh, those are YouTube video links, correct? Yes, exactly. So we all have our recordings now. Uh, and one part is getting submitted. The other one is actually giving the talk. And now we have to promote the talk, right? Like it should not, uh, we shouldn't just like leave it there on the internet forever. Uh, so actions required by the team. <laughs> Uh, like we should, uh, like everyone should be responsible for their talks, right? Like uh, write a social media post and you can, if you need help, reach out on Slack, but uh, do take the initiative. And I put like some things to what you should include like best practices, right? Of course, like what does it talk about? Who did you present with? Tag them, uh, mention something about the working group, right? Like it's, again, it's an opportunity to talk about the working group, especially if it's a technical talk, you should still mention because it's awareness again. And then of course we want to thank the CNCF and uh, Linux Foundation events team for making KubeCon accessible. So uh, we don't want to, we don't need to post it all at the same time, but like, let's, let's like during the next week, um start pushing those out uh you know the drill already we've done it multiple times uh but yeah you should you should own your post like your talk um and then uh yeah that's that's part of that's part of the whole package um yeah okay great uh so we'll partner on Slack. We'll collaborate on Slack to promote those talks. Thank you, Catherine. Uh, let's see the agenda moving on. That's Anastasia's name sign. Anastasia, all right. So Anastasia's not here. Thank you. Uh, submission she is, for- She is, she is, she is. She's here. Gone. She just arrived. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? Anastasia, Anastasia just arrived for her. <laughs> She's right here. Oh, okay. She was hiding. Uh, Non-video participants weren't showing up on my screen. My apologies. Uh, hello, Anastasia. We missed you. Oh, yeah, sorry. <laughs> I, I was, uh, I was, yeah, I was busy. Sorry. No, no problem. Working double duty there, looking at two different things, uh, doing work and looking at the meeting. Uh, very good. Very good. So it's your turn to talk about the submission. Uh, any, does something need to be submitted? Uh, do you want to talk about that? Um, me? Now? Oh, gosh. Um, I need the agenda. Hold on. <laughs> I'm trying to get it. Yeah, she literally arrived when her name was on the agenda. <laughs> yeah, perfect timing, perfect timing, that's funny. So uh, we are at the point in the agenda where it's your name is listed. Uh, the KubeCon submission, 
that would be your area. Okay. So what I wanted to say is um, KubeCon um, applications um, or everything is already finished for, you know, like we did in Paris. So um, we also, we have another track, the ArgoCon and um, Telco and then Linkerd and all of those things. Um, so we still can apply for some of those um, for KubeCon 4 uh, and it would be um, great if we could apply as much as possible and have as many talks on the on the application processes as we can. So CTO, um, I did not. Chris Anichek. Chris Anichek. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Catherine. Yeah. <laughs> Chris we'll call Anichek. Chris K. We'll call Chris K. <laughs> yes. Yes, Chris Anichek. <laughs> announced that um, we're going to have over um, 2,300 applications for KubeCon London. And um, that's a lot more than we had for the last um, KubeCon North America. So we're going to have approximately 2,500 more than we have had. So um, remember, we still need, the applications are open still. Um, so we've, we've got to make sure we get those in ASAP and more applications that we've done in the past. So we have a chance to do it. It's gonna be harder. It's gonna be more competitive. So people are gonna take our talk spots. So we're gonna have to really up our game. So uh, Catherine, do you have anything to add to what I was just saying? Um, yeah, so uh, Travis, I'll, just because this is highly related. So basically, um the cube you can submit kubecon uh talks to the co-located events actually it's recommended right so if your talk um fits a topic that is covered in one of the um co-located events submit it for that as well and what's going to happen is if kubecon does not get accepted then you still have a chance to get accepted there, right? So it's basically like a plan B. Um, and if you get accepted at KubeCon, you're automatically disqualified. So it is supposed to work like that. Because I, I, I know last time people were like, are you sure I can do it? Like, yes, that's how the system works, right? Like repurpose them. They know if you submit and you get accepted at KubeCon and then they will automatically decline you if you do because you can only give it once but it's basically a plan b it will not work for all talks because there is not a co-located event that fits every talk and they're very specific this time too so uh yeah have a look at it see where you where you can repurpose because that's easy it's just submit and i think you can even like with a drop down you can select what you've already submitted so it makes it really easy so do that if possible and um, I think, Travis, you had a question or comment. Yeah, it's a little bit off topic, but really, I want you all to recognize um, the con and congratulate the inspiring deaf people that presented at CNCF, at first CNCF. So, yeah, I just really want you to congratulate yourselves. Yeah, amazing job by all the members, for sure. Thank you. Thank you, Travis, for uh, mentioning that. One thing. Uh, I also... I also want to add that we need to congratulate Catherine because this time in the co-located events, there is going to be a link ID there for the first time. It's the second time, actually. Yeah, and also I would like to congratulate Sandeep on the uh, Woodwater Award, right? Chopping wood. You're chopping all that wood and then carrying the water award. Uh, thank you. Right, congratulations to you, Sandeep, on that. Okay. So we've done the, all the congratulatory comments. Uh, congratulations to the talks. Congratulations on surviving the week. <laughs> congratulations on making the trip there and back and making it back home safely. Anyway. Uh, let's move on. Next on the agenda is Deaf and Cloud Native. 
Okay, thanks. That's me too, Anastasia says. Um, so it's time to start our deaf in cloud native uh, meetings and meetups again. So I suggest that we have um, one in December and I would like to discuss KubeCon um, North America and do a wrap up on that and a recap. Um, and then the panel that we did um, in the panel format and all of the different things we did in Salt Lake. So um, we'll, we'll talk about that. And then I have a few other ideas that um, we might do for future panels. So um, whoever wants to come and talk um, can definitely let me know. I think we need, we have three and we need one more, I do believe. So we can get with Milad and talk about um, the, the KubeCon stuff and then um, feel free to make suggestions and give us ideas on what to include in that meeting. Also, um, if you want to present um, something on tech and you've already presented at KubeCon and you want to present again um, in the Deaf and Cloud of Native, that's great. We'll definitely take your talk, contact me or Milad. And if you want, um, you, you can be involved but just by letting us know, and we're very open to brainstorming. Also, um, I would like to prepare for the meetup topics for going forward, and then um, we'll also share in Slack, in our Slack channel. And like I said, um, contact me if, if you want to be involved in any way. And um, Andres, did you want to add anything um, about the sign language glossary? Um, any updates? Would appreciate that. Yeah, thanks. We had a great discussion. Uh, we are still working on that. We'll be in the process of uploading that. Uh, we'll be taking care of that. So that's already been taken care of, right? We're good on that end. So now, let's see, just last week, we wrote it up into Spanish. So we're still working on that. Uh, that part of the job. When do you think, uh, have you already uploaded the to that website? I'm sorry, Delaney, I've lost them. Yeah, in Spanish, not yet. In English, I have some, but we are still working on the Spanish bit and we haven't um, put that out there yet. That's Spanish sign language? <laughs> Spanish spoken language, written language. Okay, and when do you expect to see the uh, the signing uploaded onto the website? Do you have a time frame? Um, do I don't know. know. Anybody? What's, what's blocking you, Travis? What's blocking you? Why isn't it on the website yet? Okay, so right now we just got approval in November. Um, I think of the seventh um, or the seventeenth during KubeCon, and. Um, and the sign language video um, for the glossary. We've got some foundations for it set up about what your video should look like, how you should upload it, what the parameters are. And we still have that old PR from before. So um, we need to decide as a group um, where the signed videos are going to be placed inside the glossary at the top, at the bottom, etc. So we want it to be the most visible or do we want it to hide? Um, so we have to make the decisions and um, do a, like a collapsible menu or do we want it right out there in front? So we may need to make those decisions. Yeah, okay. So we just, we need to catch, okay, Rob's video is freezing here. Okay, is this better now? Is, am I not freezing? Okay, so I would just suggest that you go ahead, go ahead and upload it, and see. You know, the feeling is with that upload: is it good? Is it not good? Get community feedback. Should it be more visible first, or should it be hidden at first? Uh, remember that some people have uh, websites that you know they don't have their their internet may be slow, which causes buffering. So the video may be better off hidden at first. So we just need to weigh the options here. Uh, I think it should just go ahead, upload it, and see what happens. Uh, Catherine, I see you have your hand raised. Um, yeah, I was just going to go back to Anastasia's topic. Sorry. Um, and because um, I don't know, Anastasia, if you mentioned it, because I was a little bit um, um, 
like I had, I was writing another message. So take that as a great opportunity to, for um, more a public speaking experience, right? Like, uh, because you already have, you, you already created all the talks uh, that you presented at KubeCon. Uh, I think no one is like, maybe Rob is the only uh, person with a lot of speaking experience. So every experience, you know, you, you learn with everyone. And so I think uh, with every experience. So I think like um, participating in the deaf and cloud native meetups and presenting them again is really a great opportunity to do that again. So it's like, do, do take that opportunity and do it. Cause it's like, the more you do it, the more often, the better you get. So just wanted to mention that. And I think destiny was yes. also. Yes, absolutely. Uh, okay, uh, let's back up just for a moment there and discuss the glossary. Any blockers or uh, um, what do you? This is Destiny. No case? blockers, no blockers. But we have we have some signs that um, we're ready with, and um, but the PR PR is waiting there, and we really need to maybe grab the maintainer and figure out where we can where do we need to put them in? If we need to put them at the bottom and the collapse out in the open, you know, so we need to, um, we, we need to respond to that and figure that out. But we have videos that are ready to post. They've been recorded and we could upload them and we could do it, you know, very shortly. We were talking about it at our meeting last week. Yeah, I think it should be at the bottom for now. And then- Yeah, agreed. Once That's what everyone said. Gives their commentary and they say they want it up at the top. We can go and move it at the top at that point. Yeah, or that was can... our agreement in the first place. Put them in the bottom. And we just have to um, speak to um, Shiloh, um, the maintainer, um, and respond to that and talk about where to put them. So yeah, without doing like a drop down menu, you know. Yeah. Uh, have we tested the website? Have we tested that uh, at any point? Yeah, uh, yeah it's uh, ready. So we can, can you share the link so we can see what it looks like? I'll post it on Slack or I can post it here. Which would you prefer? You, you can put it in the chat. Okay. That's fine. Okay, let me look for it. Hang on. Thank you so much. So uh, your feedback, your thoughts would be appreciated. Uh, please put that in Slack and the group name as well. The group name is the Glossary Group or the Glossary Channel on Slack. And that's where you can participate, provide your feedback, even if you're hearing folks. What are they hearing group, right? Like Matt and Zainab, and uh, we would appreciate your feedback as well uh, as to where you see the person signing. Is it awkward to you as a viewer? I'd be curious to get your feedback and your thoughts. Your honest feedback would be greatly appreciated. Okay. And thank like you for that. In, in like these meetings? Me. Oh, go ahead. No, no, uh, you can give the feedback in Slack. Okay. Oh, I meant, um, are you asking if I find the setup awkward in these meetings or in like presentations? Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, I was referring, uh, I'll clarify that. We have a, a glossary channel. Uh, Kubernetes has a, uh, a glossary, right? For, well, it's one area of the website. Uh, and there's a whole cornucopia of vocabulary and de definitions and terminology used. What is uh, ingress and uh, scaling, things of that nature. And there's the link right there in the chat. So uh, there's all these different languages as well. There's English, Spanish, uh, Turkish, Chinese, Korean. So the litany of different languages there. So we're adding sign language into that. So that's what we're looking to get the feedback from. We're trying to figure out exactly how to present sign language in that fashion on that website, because obviously it's video based. It's not text based. So feedback for that would be great. Thank you. I have something <laughs> to say so uh we did have that discussion before and it should definitely not be collapsible because then we're missing out on the opportunity of people seeing it because we were say saying it should be on the term on the english side so hearing folks can see it if we hide it 
that opportunity is gone, right? And then again, like putting yeah. it on top of it doesn't make sense because most people who are looking, who are looking it up are hearing and they're looking it up for a definition. So it's more about like, okay, hearing folk, folks are looking up terms and it's like, oh, oh wow, there is a sign, line, a sign for it as well. So it's like that discoverability is important. So we definitely do not want to hide it because then like we're, because that was the whole discussion. Should it be its own language drop down uh, or should we kind of make it together with all the other ones? Uh, with the English one, and then we decided to include it in the English uh, term because we want people to see it, right? So don't hide it, please. And then uh, I did see, so the preview, I saw the preview, but which term is it? Because it's like, which term does it have the video? Because you need, like, I tried to look at the different terms. I didn't find any video preview. Destiny, do you know? Okay, thank you, Destiny, for putting the links into the chat there. Appreciate that. Uh, Matt has also said that the sign language T-shirts, excellent. Thank you. Uh, I'll clean all this up later. Thank you for entering all the information. Uh, Matt's talking about sign language T-shirts and Zineb's available to assist with posters and graphics uh doodles and visuals uh, that's awesome thank you so much obviously you're an artist um i work in ux design and um like i mentioned the k native has a ux working group that we're trying to get more projects to kind of do more ux work um and we've done some illustration work before in that group so if anyone wants any graphics and stuff, like I can help open up some GitHub issues. And sorry, I, I didn't introduce myself properly. I'm also a course instructor at OCAD University, um, which is an art and design school. So I know a lot of students that would love to do more illustration stuff as well. So if anyone has any ideas, let me know. That is fantastic. Really, really appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on the agenda, Catherine has an OSS captioning tool? Uh, yeah, so we've been trying to figure out how local events can use captions. And as you know, that was really expensive. Uh, yeah, because of course, like local community events don't have any budgets, they cannot pay for interpreters. So what is the alternative? Then we uh, suggested captions and turns out captions are really expensive, which I didn't know. Um, so uh, there is one person, Andrew Olson, uh, he um, uh, is an organizer of our local event and at one day uh, a deaf person reached out and said like, uh, I would like to attend, do you have any captions? And he said like, no, we don't. And then he said like, okay, then I'm not going to come. And he said, no, 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 please come. Let us figure it out. And together they created a open source tool now that he developed with the feedback of this person. Uh, it's based on Google's API. Um, and uh, yeah, it was built together. And until the deaf person said like, okay, this is working, right? So it's not something that he created. He created it with the feedback from this person, which is like really excited, exciting that and cool. Um, so I think we should leverage that. He is also very excited. When I had a meeting with him last week and he was so excited that other other events might use it too because he put all this work in it and it's like it, of course it will make him very happy if we we can use it um so the cost is only you need an additional tv to put it to put the monitor for the captions and then you need a microphone that's the only cost that you have whereas the other tools are really expensive right so right now it's only in english uh and then uh but he said, but of course it's Google API, Google's API, so it should have several languages. So he will add multiple languages for us so we can use it. Uh, so, uh, which is very cool. He's also open for feedback uh, uh, for requests if, if we need to change it. Um, so I think that's super, super exciting. Uh, the links are in the agenda. 
Uh, so what we need to do is to write a guide for local events and KCDs uh, and then kind of publish it and then send it to the um, um, Katie is like the person who kind of manages KCDs worldwide, right? And kind of like have them push it out and say like, okay, here are captions. So I think that's really great. And I love the whole fact that it is community driven, that someone cared you know, like people, like a deaf person wanted to come and they did not say, no, you cannot. He said like, no, let's figure this out together. Let's work on it. That's what open source is about. So um, let's, um, well, let's use this tool. Uh, let's help make it better too, if you have any ideas and let's make sure that everyone knows it. So I think that's really exciting. So how is this how is this print on the Chrome live caption? I don't know. I didn't build it. <laughs> it's probably the same API. Well, because you, well, Chrome is, you have your laptop. This is like actually something that is putting the captions on the screen, like the whole thing. So Chrome is for you as a user, you're using your laptop. This is a setup for an event. So you could oh. have it on your laptop, Chrome, but this is like you have, and also like if internet isn't really good, like for attendees and you have this hooked up to the internet, that are, I mean, there are a lot of um, benefits. And also uh, I think, uh, um, what was I gonna say? Oh, and then also you can uh, get the transcript of the entire talk, which is kind of cool. So you can download it afterwards, um, yeah. So, so when Anastasia, Anastasia has like those deaf in cloud native session, uh, does she have interpreters? And then I think, no. No, because that's a lot of money. <laughs> yep. Okay, no, actually, I think I start, I was thinking that the next time she has the deaf in cloud native, we could actually test this tool. But they're going to be signing, so. Okay. Yeah. So unfortunately, that event is not accessible for non-signers. But we wanted to do, but there are so many events that are not accessible for signing deaf people. So it's like, I thought it was okay. Uh, I know it's not ideal, but it is, again, that is the same problem we have. It's a local community driven event and there is no budget for interpreters. So um Okay. You know, it's frustrating uh, for, for those who do not sign, but uh it's okay. I think after the KubeCon India. So I think the KubeCon India is happening. We got the confirmation today that it will happen. Actually the even I mean the the air quality in Delhi is not too good. So uh, the organizers were like not very sure if the event will be happening as scheduled, but the confirmed today is happening. So I think after the KubeCon India, we are going to have a local <laughs> meetup in my city. And so that time I think I'll try to use the tool and actually see how it works. Well, it, it's been tested, right? It's been tested uh, at these events for uh, a long time, but yeah, we haven't tested it yet. But what we do need to make sure is, uh, like, write a guide that makes it really easy. So. Okay. Yeah. And by the way, uh, we, we can actually teach you sign language, Sandeep. We can teach you sign language. Sandeep, good wishes. I'm speaking at Yupkan India. No, 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 no. You will be on the keynote, Sandeep, on the keynote. And what is your speech going to be about? Uh, so I think uh, one is uh, to talk. The keynote talk is about unity and diversity. And it is about how I got started with the community. So I'll be talking about the community in the, the deaf and the heart of your working group, about how I met, it, met them, met you all in Chicago. And then my second talk is about Sikh country work. Like, uh, you are new to open source, how do you start contributing in open source? What are the pitfalls? What are the challenges? Very good. Very nice. Very right. Congratulations, Sandeep, on giving the keynote presentation.
Yet to give it. Yet to give it. <laughs> yes, I understand. I understand. It's premature, but uh, I have faith in you. And we're going to keep teaching you sign language, all right? We'll keep teaching you. Uh, what do you remember? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Thursday night, right? We were exposing you over and over to different signs, and you were learning them. You're a very fast learner. So you did a great job. No, I'm a very bad learner. <laughs> uh, you're doing great. You're no doing one great. believes that, Sandeep. Okay. Uh, we have covered the agenda. Is there anything you'd like to add to the agenda today or right now? Uh, Zeno, you had to ask something prior to the meeting here. Uh, you wanted to make sure about something, about doing something. Let me, Zeno, did you need something? Let me try to find you on the screen here. Ah, you were asking. Oh, the one, you one of the mentor. Taking a train went or not? Can you talk more about the one, one to one or one on one mentor, Zeno? Could you talk more about that? You know, we're having a hard time seeing you. Can you adjust the camera there? And just for the interpreter, um, they, they uh, kind of do a CDI situation here because um, he's, he doesn't oh, use ASL. Oh, 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 I'm sorry. So we're, we're kind of figuring it out as we go. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, just slow down a little bit, Zeno. Very good. Oh, talking about Gen AI. And talking about banking, the banking industry. And the deaf community here learning different signs and how important it is for that to happen. Slow down a little bit. And if the hearing people don't accept that, it's because interpreters are expensive and they don't want to pay for them. So having the caption WD, what is that? Oh, three D. Three D. I see. Okay. Ah, okay. Oh, talking about AI interpreters in three D, I think, y'all. Um <laughs> and it would be important to invest in that. And Rob was talking to me about um, putting together some things in regard to that. Yeah, that's totally fine. We can discuss uh, we can discuss that further offline uh, as to how we can use AI, uh, any kind of audio. We're still at the way, there's such a long way to go with regard to the uh, picking up sign language and AI. I've seen different companies out there. They have the video camera directly on the signer and they're trying to interpret that into English. It's incredibly challenging. Very, very challenging. And it's still in its infancy at this point. We're not there yet. Yeah. Yes. Gallaudet, yes. And we've been discussing about maybe your opinion on this. So uh, it's only very, very small words. It's not like uh, it's not like an extensive vocabulary. It's a very, very limited vocabulary that I can work with, and it needs to be trained. Right? The models need to be trained to understand these different signs and to grow its vocabulary. At this point, it's only about 20 to 30 signs that it's able to recognize. So it's very, very labor intensive okay. to decode this. Uh, and it's not like it's the entire uh, 
vocabulary of American Sign Language or MSL or anything, right? It's, again, it's literally 20 or 30 words and it's slowly growing. That that model is slowly growing. I so see. Okay. We have a very long way to go. Uh, I gave a talk on reinventing AWS. We'll be presenting at reinvent in December. Oh, and it's only 10 words. It's only 10 words, so. Again, very, very slow process. We need to be incredibly patient to work on this. Okay, very good. So next week, I'll be again, I'll be presenting at reInvent on Monday morning about uh, what we're calling general Gen ASL, right? It's the same presentation given last year. Uh, we did we did a one way, way like going from English, spoken English into American Sign Language. This time, we're having a bi-directional conversation. So I'll be able to sign in sign language, and the large language model, the LLM, <clears throat> will understand my sign. And it really, it was amazing. It was absolutely amazing to see that. Where is reInvent? Um... Yes. That you need you need to find. So we'll talk next week. I'll give that presentation. You'll see more when I give that presentation. Okay. Yeah, and it'll be on YouTube as well. At some point in the future, they'll upload it to YouTube. Awesome. Thank you. Very welcome. Okay. Uh, any other final thoughts? Anything you want to discuss? Um, uh, any serious topics? I have a very quick comment on the uh, glossary doc, like the sign language video style guide. So I see that it says videos should not be longer than seven seconds, but then the videos in the glossary are like 30 seconds. So, and I think because you guys are spelling it out and then having the word, so maybe you just want to modify the document to be a bit longer, but, but yeah, minor comment. Yeah, uh, Travis, go ahead. Yeah, there's an explanation for that because the previews were made before and um, before we published the style guide. So there's a little bit of confusion about that. So when we formally publish it, we will make that modification and do an update um, for the videos. Why was seven seconds? What what made you decide on seven seconds? Travis. Well, because we suggested that because many um, sign glossaries that we see out in the ASL community, out in the world, on the internet, um, they are very short and seven seconds was kind of an average. And it was sort of a, a generally accepted standard. So um, if it's 30 seconds, people lose interest. It's too long. People won't watch it. So if it's really short and sweet, people will just take the time to look at it. Yeah. And Alfonso is saying, yes, with a new glossary, um, of all the technology signs, there's really not one of those either. So now uh, maybe if we have experience with working with this, those of us who've been in the tech field for a long time, maybe we could um, work with some different universities and, um, and make something like that because right now we spell everything and it'd be nice to have a sign for tech words. Yeah, I just had an interesting discussion on uh, another Slack channel, another Slack group, I should say. Uh, deaf professionals group. Uh, one of the comments was, "What's the matter with initial I sign? Right? It's very, very popular. Like the F hand shape, the sign family, and now the people are doing it non-initialized without the F hand shape. Uh, Americans typically, again, we will incorporate the first letter of that English word into the actual sign. Right? As I said, this is a sign for people with a P hand shape, uh, and so there's a, a change there, a change in the mindset that's signed like this now without that initialized handshake. Uh, so it's interesting. ASL is really going, it's evolving, right? An evolutionary change currently that's happening with the language. So uh, there's a movement to remove these uh, letters, these initialized signs, because the world doesn't use letters in their signs in other countries, right? They don't do that at all in other signed languages in other countries. Whereas here in the, in the States, we've really, we've kept the incorporation of Agreed. these signs. It's the same, it's the same where yeah. I am. Yes, absolutely true all over. 
Yeah, here in America, uh, we sign HTML. We, we spell it out HTML. But mm -hmm. in other signed countries, signed languages, they this is how they sign HTML. Right? Yeah, that it makes, makes total sense. sense, right? Yes. In America, there's just a lack of creativity. Really, there's a <laughs> severe lack of creativity and spelling out everything. I just find it so interesting. Yeah. Uh, learned so much from all of you, from the folks from the international community, uh, international sign. Uh, it shouldn't sign it this way with the eye hand shape, right? I got to stop doing it. I'm going to sign it the correct way. That's not. Yes, that's right. I think yeah. interpreters so may that, need to leave. Uh, so. Yeah. Isn't that the sign for Google? Oh, yes, what, is sign name? what is my sign name? What is my sign name? Yeah, Google. Ah, okay, so okay. Sign for Google. Actually, most I keep folks, forgetting. Most people do this for Google. It's the G handshape. And with the word search, which we don't want to do. So this is the, the new sign or doing it that way. Go, go, Dale. It's fine. Go. <laughs> I've got Thank it. you very much. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah. And we're, you know, it's bad in America because, you know, a middle finger, we don't use um, middle fingers in signs because that's a bad sign in America. So yeah, we, we don't do that. That that's bad. So we don't, <laughs> we don't use that sign in America. <laughs> Destiny saying, so quickly, let me explain to you. Um, they were just asking us why seven seconds, 30 seconds, et cetera, for the videos. It's because when you um, learn each letter and you know how to spell out the word container, for example, and if you spell it, it takes longer. But when you give the sign, um, it it doesn't really, it I, you can play it and then the video shouldn't be super long. It should replay itself every seven seconds on a loop. So um, that's why we were considering about different signs and words and if we should spell them before or if we should just do the sign and like the sign for container, we, you know, if, if the word's already been spelled in the glossary, do we need to finger spell it in the video? So that's some context for why we did it the way we did it. And Rob saying there will be some special rules, right? There will be some special exceptions, but yeah. Yeah, we did seven seconds because, you know, I know that um, container, we just want to show what the sign is instead of spelling out C-O-N-T-A-I-N-E-R plus the sign because that takes a lot longer and it's too much on YouTube. Okay, thank you all for coming. It's a great meeting. Really appreciate it. And thank you for staying. And um, all right. Bye, everybody.